Hello everyone, it is Antonetta McKay from I Follow the Leader LLC. Tonight I gave my third Toastmaster speech and I'm excited to say I won my third Best Speaker Award, yay! I have truly enjoyed being a part of Toastmasters and tonight was my third speech. It was titled Diversity and Leadership Part 2. So go check out a little post view of the diversity and leadership part one speech I gave to learn more about when I started getting involved in diversity and leadership in graduate school. I ended diversity and leadership part one with this acronym, AWE, and just talked about how can we put the AWE and awesome when it comes to diversity and leadership. So I'm gonna pick right back up there tonight and expound on it. I'm gonna use a personal example. So when it comes to diversity and leadership, it can often be a buzzword or what people call an empty word. So a word that a lot of people say and feel they have to say, but they don't really do anything about it. So what can you do? If you care about diversity and leadership and you wanna do more and you want your organization to do more, what are some action steps? One thing you can do if you're not in leadership Go talk to leadership. I know that can seem scary, but really it's important to get the courage up to talk about not just diversity, but other things that you're passionate about and care about. You should feel comfortable in your workplace. And it's important for all of us to ensure that we're helping to make our workplaces more diverse and more inclusive. Okay, so what next? You reach out to your leadership team. What are some suggestions you can give them? Well, you can ask them if they've surveyed con constituents or employees recently. So have they surveyed people? Do they know where the baseline is and how people feel about the diversity and inclusion in the workplace? So then you have a great baseline that will also give you and your leadership team a lot of great ideas about what they can do. Something I definitely recommend is training. So in my room today in Toastmasters, I surveyed people and I do this when I speak a lot. How many people have done a diversity training in the last year? Tonight in a room of about 12, it was two people. And that's very common. So a great first training is implicit bias training. So a lot of people don't realize that we all have biases. And if you don't think you have a bias, then you don't know what to do about it and how to get over it and get past it or even just to be aware of it. So implicit bias training is a great first training. You can also form a working group. So it's really awesome. I can say where I work currently, the leadership team is awesome and they recently formed a diversity and inclusion working group. And I'm happy to say I was appointed the chair of the group. Um, so that's something else that you can do in your organization. You can form a working group to really tackle diversity and inclusion or any other issue. So I think that is a great use of company resources and time. And why? Why is it a good use of company resources and time? I'm going to go into the second word, when. When, because it's a great use of time and resources because companies and organizations and workplaces that have more diverse teams outperform those that don't. So that applies to racial diversity and gender diversity. So it's really important to some people they need to know the business case for diversity. And so it's important for you to do some of that research. I can definitely say there's amazing research out there so you don't have to do it on your own. But some leaders need that business case for diversity. And so you can look up research that applies to your field and industry and get some great examples and statistics about why diversity is important and why it will help your team to be better. All right, now the third word, echo. So are you making sure that your workplace and your leadership team echoes the environment that you're in. This is so important, especially as it relates to nonprofits and community organizations that are serving people in the community. So are they seeing someone that looks like them in leadership? That's very pivotal and important. It's also important to keep up with the research and realize the workforce is changing. So if you're doing the same things you were 10 or even five years ago, it's not going to work. 
So something was put out recently. Millennials are now the largest group in the workforce. What does that mean as it uh, pertains to diversity and leadership? Well, millennials are known to care more about diversity, to care more about the environment and other societal issues. So if you want to be able to retain the employees that are the future of the workforce, it's going to be really important for you to recognize diversity and inclusion. And so this isn't just as it comes to race and gender, but also as it pertains to sexual orientation, also as it pertains to time off, maternity leave, paternity leave. So there's so many policies that people have to think about that we didn't have to think about working remotely as much 15 years ago. But times have changed. And so making sure that you are keeping up with the environment. By 2030, baby boomers are going to be uh, one in five of the population. And so it will be the first time in the United States that the older population outnumbers children. And so it's not just the workforce where diversity and the changing demographics of the United States matter. It also will matter in our everyday lives. So those are just some things to think about. So I really hope that you enjoy these tidbits about action steps that you can utilize to make sure your company wins and to make sure you're echoing the environment. So let's all think about ways that we can put the on awesome as it pertains to diversity and leadership this week. If you have any questions, please let me know. I have a lot of personal experience and I've done a lot of research in this area and talked to a lot of CEOs across the country as it pertains to diversity and leadership. So happy to help you in any way that I can on this journey, because my prediction is companies that do not care about diversity and leadership are not going to be successful anymore. So over the next five to 10 years, watch out for companies that do not value diversity and leadership. And remember, valuing it is not just putting it in your mission statement. It's also being able to let your community, your workers, your board members know what you're doing to tackle diversity and leadership and making sure you have a diverse and inclusive culture. So we definitely do not want to be the Starbucks case where we're on the national news and then we have to close the workplace down to do diversity training. Let's go ahead and do diversity training. Let's make sure that we're doing training. And if your employee is asked, when's the last time you did diversity training? They can raise their hand and say, yes, I've done diversity training in my workplace in the last year. All right. So thank you so much for listening. I can't wait to talk to you more about diversity and leadership. It's something I'm so passionate about, and I believe we should all be inexorable when it comes to diversity and leadership. So completely unmoving and knowing that it matters and we will keep speaking up and keep talking about it. So thank you guys. And let's all also keep having ridiculously good ideas. So I am just so motivated by so many leaders who are doing amazing work in this area. And I want to let you know too, you have ridiculously good ideas, not just as it pertains to diversity and leadership, but other things. And get the courage to speak out, speak up, and let's all take some action this week. Thanks so much.